So there's a, there's a lot in that area. Let me start with the technology, distributed ledger technology. Incredible promise. It can, it can drive efficiencies not only in the financial markets, but in a lot of markets. Fine. Two areas in the financial markets where distributed ledger technology has come to the fore. Cryptocurrencies. These are replacements for sovereign currencies, replace the dollar, the yen, the euro with Bitcoin. That type of currency is not a security. Let me turn to what's a security. A token, a digital asset where I give you my money and you go off and make a venture. You have some company you want to start or something you want. And in return for me giving you my money, you say, you know what, I'm going to give you a return or you can get a return in the secondary market by selling your token to somebody, that is a security, and we regulate that. We regulate the offering of that security, and we regulate the trading of that security. And that, that's our job, and we've been doing it for a long time. So you're saying, the classic definition of a security, you invest in a common enterprise with an expectation of profit. You're saying the way you look at most ICOs, they are securities. Correct. Are you planning now to make a clear statement on that? Because there seems to be a lot of confusion about whether anybody is going to get approved or not. Bob, I hope I just did. If it's a security, we're regulating it. And let, let me just, we've been doing this for a long time and we've built a $19 trillion economy, a securities market that's the envy of the world following these rules. If you have an ICO or a stock, and you want to sell it in a private placement, follow the private placement rules. There's no secondary trading, you know, you have to do that. If you want to, if you want to do an IPO with a token, come see us, file financial statements, file disclosure, take the responsibility our laws require, and we're happy to help you do that public offering. You seem to be saying that the SEC is not going to be changing the definition of a security just to suit the ICO community, is that I'm, right? I'm certainly not going to support that. Okay, let me move on. What about altcoins? We have discussed Bitcoin, but there are other altcoins out there. There is Ether, for example. Mm -hmm. There is Ripple. Are, are, is Ether a security? So Bob, I'm not going to comment on specific crypto assets and whether they are a security or are not a security, but you, you captured the definition very well. Now, am I giving you my money for you to go off in a venture where I'm relying on your efforts and the efforts of your colleagues. But there are, you understand, there are lawsuits, I'm sure you know right now, for example, over Ripple, mm -hmm. about whether it is or is not actually a security. That's partly, partly one of the issues here, mm -hmm. and obviously well, how the SEC feels is very important. Mm -hmm. no, I, I, we, we are not gonna do any violence to the traditional definition of a security, which has worked well for a long time, and I believe will continue to work well. Is it possible the SEC might say these were securities at one time and no longer are because they're not centrally controlled, for example? Look, that's, that's, a, that's a question that is out there and you know, will be answered in the specific facts and circumstances. But we've been doing this a long time, and there's no need to change our fundamental approach. Let me move on. Bitcoin ETFs. A lot of people chomping out the bits. I, I, I've covered ETFs for a long time. A lot of issuers are waiting. What criteria do you need to start a Bitcoin ETF? We now have a very fairly well-developed futures Bitcoin market that's been out six months now. Are you pleased with how that is going? Is, is the development of that market sufficient to allow Bitcoin ETFs or are there other criteria? So Bob, our, our division of investment management has put out and been very clear with the industry about the types of things that we're going to need in any asset class if we're going to approve a product. And one of those things, one of those things is, you know, is the pricing something that people can rely on? Also asset verification. And our, our communication to the marketplace on this has been very clear. I've, I'm very pleased with my colleagues at the SEC because I think we're very open about what we need for you to satisfy our rules.